Hello, I'm Chris Oldland. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Field Service News and I'm here at the end of the Field Service Forum in a very sunny Amsterdam. I'm very pleased to be joined by Kuhn Jürgens, who has been chairing the conference, um, been very heavily involved in the, the discussions throughout the day, so who better to pick uh, their brains to find out what the key points were from the conference. Kuhn, thank you very much for joining us. It's great much. to have you on board. Yes, and great thank to you see you again. Yeah. Um, Agile was the headline, wasn't it? it that was, that, yeah. That's what's on the top of the agenda. Yeah. How is the word agile, which is a bit of a buzz phrase, yes. how has that translated into actual conversations across the last day or so? Well, the word agile was actually paired with the word disruption, and disruption was quite easy to explain to all the people because everybody sees technology changing, customer expe expectations are changing, and actually how to deal with that disruption which is out there. And traditional change management does not uh, uh, cut it anymore, so we have to go into more agile mode. As Darwin said, it's the most adaptive species that yes. will actually survive, and that's actually a translation of agile into this conference. Absolutely, not the strongest, not the fastest, the most agile. No, true. Disruption then, let's talk about disruption. What, and I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball yep. in here. So, having been involved with the, the planning of the conference, and where, where we were going with the, yep. the agenda to an extent with the team here at Copperbury, what's been the disruptive conversation that you didn't expect? What's been the, the conversation that has kind of come out from the last couple of days that perhaps you weren't expecting? Well, we're also geared about interacting with customers and what we took, really took me off guard that was the, the importance of customer satisfaction mm -hmm. and how customer satisfaction we use in PS, we think it is very important and do we do either of those things because the quality department asks us to do so or is it genuine interest and do we take that information to improve or to innovate? And there were some speeches up there and especially the psychological part of customer satisfaction, it really was a curveball at this conference. Okay, and, and finally, um, we've seen, a, as you kind of touched on across the last couple of questions, yeah. we've seen a, a pretty broad range here, haven't we? We've been discussing yeah. robotics in the last True. session, we've virtual been discussing reality. virtual reality, we saw a great uh, AR demonstration yeah. yesterday. Uh, there was, I hosted a session myself on cloud and IoT. Yeah. All a lot of technology, but also a lot of conversations around um, the, the culture, the processes. This, this point you make about change management yeah. not quite being enough. Yeah. Huge amount to distill into, into a, a couple of sound bites. So I, I'm going to yeah. appreciate if you can, though. Um, what would you say would be three big takeaways that those folks at home that couldn't attend the conference should be considering when they're looking at how they can improve their own services? Well, the improvement is actually, uh, the biggest one is actually, are we still product focused? Do we focus on the output or the outcome? We have software as a service. Uh, Jim actually introduced buses as a service or product as a service. That is something, and maybe you don't have to change your entire organization in that direction, but at least you have to have an open mind to invest in it and to see what's happening. And whilst doing so, you will get into an interaction with your customer and you understand actually how they're using your product. And that information, if you feed that back into your organization, then suddenly a lot of pieces of the puzzle will fall into place. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll see you again soon. Thank you very much.